Today, um, I wanted to show you something about Tesla coils. And here's a continuous wave Tesla coil that puts out a high frequency alternating current at a high voltage, high enough to ionize the air. And you get that purple breakout over there. Now that's alternating current. So in theory, alternating current shouldn't do anything to this electroscope. Here I have a stainless steel ball and then I have two pieces of really thin foil hanging in that bottle, that mason jar, and they're close together. And so if I put alternating current near to this, the net charge is zero, so nothing should happen. So let's put this near to the Tesla coil and see that for ourselves. So I can see nothing's happening with the two foils. They're just kind of sitting there. They're not gaining any charge. And that proves that Tesla coils like this produce alternating current, high, high voltage electromagnetic fields. So what if we um, try and rectify the output of the Tesla coil? Now I've seen people mention this on high voltage forums, but I don't believe I've ever seen a video of anyone trying it. So what I did here is I got a series of high voltage rectifiers and basically encased them in hot glue so that they're totally isolated from the outside. And I have five rectifiers here and each one is 20,000 volts. So that gives me 100,000 volts, which I think should be sufficient to handle the voltage of this Tesla coil. So I'm gonna put this here and see if it's possible to rectify the output of the Tesla coil. So one way of telling whether it's rectified is it should affect the foil leaflets. The rectifiers are connected in such a way that it should only give positive output and any negative output will go to ground. And there's a ground wire right here, which will take away any negative. So this should produce a net positive charge. Now, I'm not expecting a lot to happen. So let's see how this is gonna go. So we'll use our little electroscope here to test this. So you can see the two foils over there. What I'm gonna do is hold it near to this and then turn it on. Wow, you see that? How they're separating? Let me do that again for you. So the two foils are separating because there's positive charge building up and they're repelling each other, showing that that's happening. But did you notice there's no corona output anymore? Nothing's happened. But I can feel kind of a, an iron wind blowing off the top of this coil. Now let's try another experiment to see if that works. See if it'll blow this flame. So I'm going to put it right near the output of the Tesla coil. And I'm going to see if it blows the flame. So you, as you can see there, it's blowing that flame. So what I have here is a Leyden jar consisting of a plastic bottle with aluminum foil on the inside and outside. And I'm spraying charge onto the Leyden jar. And I'm gonna show you that charge is building up on the jar. Here it goes. You see that? That's charge building up from the Tesla coil, proving that it's producing a DC jet. If you leave it near the Tesla coil a bit longer, it will develop more charge. I've improved the lighting so you can see the um, foils better. In that first video, you couldn't see them really well, but there you go, there's DC being generated by a Tesla coil. Now let's see what happens when we short the DC output out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect one of these to ground and I'm gonna connect the other one, or I'll put it near to the output of the coil. So here's my ground wire, and here's the output of the coil, and let's see what it does. So it produces output that looks a little bit like a flyback transformer, see that? So there you go, folks. Um, just a simple experiment to show that it is possible to rectify the output of a, uh, a high-frequency Tesla coil. This one actually operates around 750 kilohertz, so it's a really high frequency. 
and to produce a stream of electrons that can charge up various objects, including this capacitor here and including this electroscope. And um, the output seems to be less than what I would have expected, but I think it has something to do with the, uh, the diodes that I have in here. These are rated for around maybe uh, up to 50 kilohertz uh, in maximal frequency. These are high frequency diodes, but this is producing 750 kilohertz. So I don't think the rectification is that efficient, but there is enough rectification to demonstrate that you can produce DC output, unsmooth DC output from an alternating current Tesla coil. Well, thanks for watching um, folks and uh, Please check back later. If you've got any comments, I'd be happy to hear them, but thought this would be an interesting demonstration of rectifying the output of a Tesla coil. Peace out.